Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Free coming to you live from the quarantine cabin on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. We are here Mondays and Thursdays with your emails, your stories, your questions. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. That's how it all works. You tell a friend, a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa, anyone with ears. Then they tell a friend, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa. And that's how we keep growing because it grows every week and it's because of you, the listener. And listen, if you haven't told someone you're wrong, you haven't paid for the podcast. I consider that currency. So why don't you go and make your Instagram story right now? I'll give you a chance. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Make your Instagram story. Tag me. Tag a bitch. Tag a friend. I'll I'll give you a little heart. I appreciate it. And listen, we have a whole new schedule. Mondays, J Train Podcast. Wednesday, I got Luxury Lounge on Patreon. Uh, Thursdays, I got J Train Podcast. Friday, one more email on Patreon. Sunday, we do Coffee with J Train on Patreon. So it's all there. Five bucks a month, three extra podcasts a week. Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. I'm very excited about today's guest. Um, I'm a huge fan. I, I, an Emmy winner that not every day we get an Emmy winner uh, and has, <laughs> she's rolling her eyes at me, has a brand new book out right now called Yes, I Can Say That. When they come for the comedians, we're all in trouble. Judy Gold, thank you for coming on. Jared, thank you for, co- for having me. And also what's with the, you can tell a f- bitch or a friend. What the fuck a, is that? A bitch, a, a brother, a friend. A con? Anybody. You can tell whoever, whoever you want to tell. If you're going to say bitch, you have to, like, make it equal it? with, like, a cock like a cock or a fucking So whatever. what would it be? Tag a bitch just has a good ring to it. I, I don't think as bitch. Bitch has no gender to me. What, what, uh. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> what, maybe, maybe, um. You know, post There's a cock. There's no word. There's is no, there? like, equivalent language for guys that there is for women. Like. The, you're right. You're right. There. Well, even with like, um, I've been trying my best and I do try when we talk about women, sometimes I'll say girls, like the girls. Right. And then that's And then they get mad and then people do get upset and I I understand it and you try to respect it. And I say women, I try to say women, 18 above, you're a woman. But for guys, there's no, when I say, hey, those guys, I kind of, that to me is an equivalent of girls, but it's not. Right. Exactly. It's all very confusing. Yeah. But that's, that's why but you that's, gotta get my book. This okay. is a great segue. This is why everyone needs to go. So I love what you're writing about. I mean, I love everyone needs to go follow Judy Gold at Judy Gold on both Twitter and Instagram. It's Jew, J E W. I got you. I, I got I did some research. All right, good. Okay. Judy Gold at Jew D Gold. Um, go follow on Instagram and Twitter. It's gonna be all over my social media, so you can follow her there. But your book is like what's that is the story of 2020 your book i please explain to listeners what it's about what's going on so the book you know i did a piece for vice vice news on hbo and it was about how college bookers are telling comedians what they can and cannot say on stage and i think I, i'm in the piece oh, not to make it about are. me I, I i brought you on stage i think oh yeah, yeah during yeah. the piece yeah that's right and it's a and, very good piece and i loved watching it Yeah, so I was the opposing voice, like, don't fucking tell me what to say on stage. Like, yeah. So then Harper Collins saw it and they came to me and said, would you write a book about this? And I was like, absolutely. Awesome. Um, And it really it's very thorough. Oh, the audio book is great. It's in my voice. Um, Not that I would ever listen to it because I fucking hate my voice. But, um, (laughs) you know, it's really about the fact that you know, we should be able to say whatever the fuck we want as long as it's funny. I mean, you can talk about whatever, make it funny. Yes. But don't put comedians, you know, on this, like politicians say the most ins- horrible things that incite violence and kill people and sure. you're fucking canceling comics. No, sorry. And, and and you know, what people forget is they take the words and they strip out the intent. Right, that's the whole thing. What, you know, I write in the book about how when you're on trial for murder, if you murdered mm-hmm. someone, you're on trial for homicide, your sentence is based on your intent. What were yeah. you thinking? Were you, and yet we don't get the same. I we know. Don't get and, the same consideration. And a lot of that has to do with kind of the world of the Internet and how it works. Uh, right. People take, you know, the Internet works in moral superiority. And if they can take your words and they can out moral you, 
then you lose. Get the right. hell out. Kick them out of the house. And right. I, I, that, it's such an important book. That's why I want everyone, you got to go get it. Anywhere you buy a book, it's called Yes, I Can Say That, Judy Gold, and it's on Audible Books. It was the number one new release on Amazon in the comedy section. People, this is get a must-buy. Go get, get the book. If and you, you love comedy, you'll, lo- you'll, be, you know, you'll love it because there's so what? much history and... Also, and, if you have a passing interest for what's going on today right. and and thinking through it critically, I mean, right. you, you know, Nimesh Patel, who's a good friend of mine, you talk about his Love situation him. in the book. Yeah. And, and, and how do you come at that? Because I watch the piece. The Vice piece is very funny because the people who they interview who have problems with language, they they look like central casting. Or, I have problems I <laughs> with language. I have problems, period. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These, these are never... That's the thing with Twitter. It's like they, they should have... Like, when your friend who's out of their mind says right. something, you go, well... Okay, they're you know, out of their mind, yes. But this is what they said. You get that right. precursor. You don't get that on the internet. Oh, I know. well, also, I'm in therapy eight times a week, every hour. But also, right. here's my opinion on what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that should be on there. It, it's it. It was, but that's what these people are like. They don't listen. There's no context. There's no nuance. It's mm. like I can't hear. I can't hear that word. And what is this thing where no one can feel uncomfortable? That's the other I thing. Know. Like yeah. I have to shield you. Fuck you. Like there's every safe space has a door to the real world. Like this is not how it is. Okay. I- I was Open just up. rant. I was just ranting about this today. Have you seen the new mu- music video by Cardi B? I'm sure you're aware. Uh, uh, WAP. There's no, a, she I has a new music it. video called I WAP. Saw, yeah, so I saw stuff about it online. So what is so it? So people are upset that Kylie Jenner was in the video, and it's like, wh- who cares? She could put. Cardi B can put whoever the fuck she wants in the it's video. It's her fucking video. Shut the and, fuck up. Exactly. So they're saying, well, she has no, she's not a singer and she's not a dancer. She's not so promoting another artist. Like, who gives a fuck? That's, it's like, that's the reality of the world. Also, the reality is rich people help rich people. Right. So, so, so like, Kylie. That is so true. That <laughs> yeah. is so fucking true. Kylie and Cardi came together because they identify as rich. They don't right. identify as you. And it's like, right. that's the reality of life that, you know, I guess that's that when everyone be- has a soapbox and it's like, everyone. and if you, it used to be like, if you were crazy, everyone would be like, Oh, they're crazy. Just don't even yeah. bother. <laughs> and now that crazy person can go online and find a million other people who are just as fucking crazy as I them know. feeding into the craziness. And it's like, and- Oh my God, shut the fuck up. Everything is not about you. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, you're speaking to my soul. That's why everyone I we have. I mean, I love the listeners of this podcast because we have uncomfortable conversations comfortably. This is a place people send right. in their emails. We, they want advice. They want to hear real. They want to hear honest perspective. And I think the people who listen to this podcast, what a great read for the summer, the early fall. Yes, I can say that. That's the book. Judy Gold. You can go to judygold.com, judygold.com, at Jew. D gold on Instagram and Twitter. It's going to be all <laughs> over my social media. I'm a huge Judy gold fan. Oh, and I love Jared, that you're here. You're such this a nice a, Jewish boy. Well, yeah. this is such an exciting moment for me to have you on this podcast because we're going to let's play the game. Let's I answer some wait. emails. I can't wait. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Jared, my question for you. Should I leave a healthy relationship to explore my sexuality with women? I'm a woman, and I've known I've been attracted to both men and women since I was 14. I didn't feel comfortable experimenting in high school, and I went to a pretty conservative college where I didn't know many openly gay or bisexual women. It's always been easier to date men, but I've only ever fooled around with a woman and always wondered what it would be like to date or do more with a woman. After college, I moved to a liberal city and was planning on experimenting, but I happened to meet a great, really nice guy, and we've been seeing each other for about six months now. I know I should want to stay in this healthy relationship, but there's a part of me that is still curious about exploring my sexuality more. Is it reasonable to break up with someone who hasn't done anything wrong just so I can experiment? Thanks so much. So what do you think? Judy? I I don't want to... 
I don't want to out you, but I, I think your background is helpful Why for this a email. Why I'm the fucking Audi <laughs> outman. Um, She's Judy. Okay. For those at home, Judy's taping from P Town. Uh, yeah. So so so. Um, so if you had any questions, I'm a yeah. lesbo. Okay. So I think absolutely. You know. Look, absolutely. Yes, you're in the your relationship for six months, right? So it's not yeah. like you've invested. This is something that's obviously on your mind, in your gut, something you're thinking about all the yeah. time. You don't want to get deeper into this relationship and then be like, oh, I met a woman. Um, yeah. And maybe and he'll be open to you experimenting. But, you know, you can't have this burning desire. It's not fair to him and it's not fair to you. And, you know, maybe he'll be around. But it's like... Did you, you know, ever date it, men? Did you ever uh, have this? Uh, <laughs> I want to vomit. I, you know, look, so I come from a different generation. When, mm. when I came out, I mean, I knew I was gay when I was like three, five, yeah. you know. <laughs> but no one came out because they, your life re- literally would be over. So sure. most of my generation, I, there's a few gold star. Gold, I'm going to teach you something. A gold star, gay or lesbian, means they never had sex with the opposite sex. They're called okay, I didn't know star. that was the name, but I knew there was a, a, there's yeah, a certain... It, it's called gold star. I am not gold star. I, I think a lot of people of my generation really tried to be straight or really felt like I have to prove this to myself because it's such an awful way to live. Um, so, yes, I did experiment with men um and it was just completely unnatural physically for me it was like uh, it's like you like making out with a guy you know sure and just, I, right i and, and well not to go back to take a second to go back to plug city that's why your book is kind of an important read you have context for the moment what people right. are getting upset about like to be to to be a young woman like you were saying the world around me is impossible for me to come out in some case. And so I'm going to go, you know, straight for a minute. Right. Like the world is different. The world is kind of better now for that. Right. Not that oh, it's, it's great, absolutely. but you know, but it's, and you know, first of all, it's better because of the AIDS crisis, which is sad, but you know, all these people were dying. These, these mm-hmm. men who'd been together 30, 40 years. And yet, they were being kicked out of their homes because the family would show up at the end and be like, get out uh, yeah. and oh, take their it, belongings it, yeah. and not let them go to the funeral. I mean, it, that's, we just wanted, that's why this whole fucking, when people are like, we want extra, we want, no, we just want the same, you know, you just want norm, normalcy right. of a society. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, you know, you, see how people come out later in life and they're like, yeah, they came out. It's because they couldn't handle it. I mean, it yeah. really, it wasn't it, it was like hard. it is today. And sure. there's still kids today who are afraid to come out. And so, we know what, we know some comics too, don't we? I, listen, they're, they're out there. Yeah. And the reality is like, I mean, to go back to the book one more time, because everyone should go to judygold.com. Uh, when you hear people complaining about such smaller things, when you're like, uh, you're like, listen, I was just trying to live at a certain point right, right, and right, it wasn't right. allowed. But I, right. I, I, I agree with what you're saying about this person's situation because I think passion can turn into resentment where right. you're like, you, you know, you're like, man, this is inside of me. I want to like, I got to be true to yourself. I mean, otherwise you're going to be an angry, miserable fuck, you know, yeah. and make someone else angry and miserable. And, and to personalize this, she says, she writes in her emails, I know I should want to stay in a healthy relationship, but there's a part of me that's still curious exploring my sexuality more. Is it reasonable to break up with someone who hasn't done anything wrong just so I can experiment? As a straight guy, I've broken up with people just to experiment with other right. women. You know, right. so so it is, it, you know, relationships are in a way unreasonable and that's okay. You're trying right. to find the match for you and right. the match for you isn't, Everybody just, you know, she's never going to be fully in with this thing flying around in her head. You know, absolutely. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Judy gold at Jew D gold (laughs) on Instagram and Twitter. 
uh, I love the go, way you say it. I love I'm, it. Listen, I'm enunciating so people know. At uh, you, J W. Yeah. Ju- it's like I'm screaming at you. I, I know. Go, 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 go. Follow. Go get the book. Yes, I can say that. Important book. Great reading. Hilarious. You're gonna love it. Go to judygold.com. Friend request from an ex. Jared. Feathers to the balls. I say feather, feather, as it feels like a feather to my nuts when people yeah. compliment me. I've been, <laughs> I've been listening to the pod for years and recently started following you on TikTok. Thank you for previous advice about a guy who can't kiss despite being in his 30s. Um, That's bad. Cutting to the chase. I got a Facebook friend request from an ex around 3 a.m. this past weekend. The breakup was not amicable. He dumped me while drunk right after my birthday at the start of the last holiday season. When I, w- went th- when I wanted to talk about it sober, he couldn't handle it and ghosted me after dating for three years on and off. I knew it was that uh, it was the grand finale of our relationship, and I unfriended, unfollowed him on all social, deleted his message, blocked his IG and number, even removed him as a LinkedIn connection. Do you, do you know how hurt you have to be to log into LinkedIn? Pretty fucking butthurt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't regret it as it has helped me finally move on. He emailed me a few months ago only to say that he's sorry about his actions, but also that he's still doesn't want to be with me but would like to be friends in the nicest way possible i told him to fuck off yeah. so when i received his friend request out of the blue i was dumbfounded because we're not on any speaking terms did his penis send the request did he take a trip down memory lane and saw that we were no longer friends was this to test the waters to see if it's safe to reach out again Thank you in advance if you read this email in the pod and cannot wait to see you again in Nashville once the pandemic is over. P.S. I blocked him on Facebook as of yesterday because I have zero interest in being even virtual friends with him, but I just would like a male's perspective of the reasoning behind the friend request. So, Judy, what do you think? What do you think the reason that this guy would just friend out of the blue after so, after kind of a fuck off email and okay well first of all the guy sounds like an asshole narcissist yeah. piece of shit not immature yeah. right um i think i you know look i i have two straight sons um how is it dealing you know you I, i've met your sons great guys you talk about them on stage with girlfriends right. how is it seeing you know, you know, when I bring up, have you hooked up? Have you ever been with a man? You go, ugh, gross. How right. is it seeing your sons like they're active, like good looking dudes? Yeah, they're gr- but they're good kids. Like, yeah, here's the thing. I asked their girlfriends if they're different than other guys they've dated. Mm-hmm. And they're like, absolutely. One was like, oh, my God, he talks about his feelings all the time. Yeah, um, <laughs> but they 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 are respectful of women and they have, you know, the difference between my sons, I think, and a lot of straight guys is they have platonic relationships with women. They know how to be a friend and, and not objectify a woman. They really do. Uh, Even though they're, they're, they're straight and they like, you know, I'm sure they are like, woo, hot ass, whatever. They don't, um, they don't think women are incapable of anything. Um, they want women to succeed and th- there's it's really it's really an interesting well to also defend it, men a yeah. little bit what you're saying is also you know to have platonic i've you know having platonic f- female relationships is very important but like you it's hard to have platonic female relationship without being someone who object objectifies women because you're just not sure of what the dynamic is. Sometimes you're like, is she a friend with me? Cause is there an attraction here? Just right, but then having you talk that- about you gotta talk about that stuff. You know, yeah. first and also, look, they have been around I mean, look, I'm a lesbian, but I love guys. I have so many yeah. straight guy friends. You know how yeah. I love I lo- Of course. Like I am not one of these like Ooh, you know. Um, but you can set up boundaries and, and be friends without, you know, have like, oh, of, I, I want to fuck her. I don't know if I want to, oh, because, because we're both hetero, there has to be, of some course, sort, you know what I mean? And I feel like it's pressure, um, that I think heteros have a lot of pressure like that, but it's also, I think you're missing out when I think when straight guys don't have female friends, I think they're kind of missing out because mm-hmm. there are some really fun women out there yeah and i would i would imagine when when you're when when you're bringing up two boys you're saying you know there's no there's no like message sent where it's like why are you hanging out with the girls 
Right. You know, that, that kind of happens when you're growing up as a guy where it's right. like, hang out with the boys, go play some gay right, sports. Right. You know, I would imagine growing up in your home, there's no, that, that message well, isn't no, being sent. I, we were, ve- we're very sports. Like they're very cis gender male. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I used to take them to the WNBA games and they were really great. And then, you know, Henry gets older. He's like, there's no way a WNBA player can beat a college uh, basketball. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> yes, they can. But you know, they're, uh, they are still male. Yeah. You know, Ben, Ben, will, you know, both of them will be like, oh, my really good friend blank. And it's like, oh, we're really close. And like, literally, there's no anything. But it's yeah. they're so around. They're around so many different kinds of people. You know what I mean? That's in, that's important to it. And I, I think, they, yeah, they've been you know, exposed to so much. And also, you know, for this email where she's saying a guy friend requests out of the blue. This is someone who hasn't grown up emotionally. They don't have people to lean on when they're lonely like to me like all and, these reach outs are when loneliness hits he's right. using you and a friend request and, to get through his shit and also the time the, the time of yeah. day that he did it absolutely and the fact that he did it that way like in a oh let me try in this way let me try to yeah. get it that way it's like fuck you you fucked it up you and, fucked up you know and, uh, yeah it, and, and, uh, write a letter, like write a letter, send something, do something, you know, <laughs> do something other different. Ways. Well, yeah, I, I, I say to her, like, I understand why she wants to know the why. I think she did the right move. Deny absolutely. it. Keep up the boundaries. And, you know, the why is he's lonely, but he doesn't know how to work through it. So he's looking for someone who has said yes to his naked body in the past to tell him that he's a good person. And he's not going to get that from and you. And you're he not deserve providing that. that to him since he treated you like shit. Exactly. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Upstart. During these economically turbulent times, everyone's looking for a way to feel more financially secure. If you're still throwing money at a high interest credit card every month, it's time to check out Upstart, the revolutionary lending pl- platform that knows you're more than just your credit score. Find out how low your Upstart rate can be today. This is an amazing opportunity. If you're paying interest on any bill, Just anything you're doing. Let's take a look at your financial life. If you have bills out there, which we all do, and you're paying an interest rate because you owe a certain amount of money, let's take a look at that rate. Let's compare it to the upstart rate and see if we can save you money. This is found money. Upstart also goes beyond the traditional credit score. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. Skip the bank. It's completely online. Loans from 1000 to 50000 May And they make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate. It's just a soft pull. It won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens if you accept your rate. The best part, once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day, the next day. Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high-interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. That's huge. Maybe you have a few bills outstanding, Maybe, and then you combine those rates. Is it higher than the Upstart rate? Now you're saving money. Call to action. Sure, let's do some stuff. See why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot. Hurry to upstart.com slash JTrain. That's upstart.com slash JTrain to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit rate. Only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash JTrain. Here's the part the lawyers make me say. Your loan amount will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Not all applicants will qualify for the full amount. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Figs. Figs. With the coronavirus, the world changed overnight. Doctors, nurses, and other medical professions professionals ran into the chaos. They've been working extra long hours and risking their lives to save ours. So, shouldn't somebody looking at be looking out for them? Well, Figs is an amazing company who has helped the back who has had the backs of medical professionals since 2013. They create ridiculously soft modern scrubs that look good, feel good, and help medical professionals perform at their best. In response to COVID-19, Figs has donated over 30,000 sets of scrubs to hospitals and donated $100,000 to the Frontline Responders Fund. They also utilize their supply chain to make millions of N95 masks that get PPP into the hands of the people who need it most. So for all you folks at home, why should you wear Figs? Well, every set of Figs is antimicrobial, 
anti-wrinkle, moisture wicking, and made with stretchy, super soft fabric. Figs comes in a ton of colors and styles from classic V-neck to straight leg pants. They even have styles with yoga waistbands, and they make jackets, totes, and even compression socks. I'll say this. I have figs. They're wonderful. You can wear them out or in the. You can wear them in and out of the house. That, especially the pants, they look good. They don't look sloppy. I have, of all the things we get sponsored by, I get the most feedback about figs. I get frontline workers, nurses, doctors that reach out to me that listen to the show, and they are they. These are like the Cadillac of scrubs. These are, and so if you know a medical professional in your life that needs scrubs to like go to work, what a, this is a gift. This is a gift to give them, and I'm gonna give you some free money because I know they're gonna love it. I know the power of getting dressed to go to work. All of us know that. The power of feeling good. When you feel good, you work good, you go to work, you happier. This is all mixed together in the feelings pie. So if you're looking for a gift for a medical professional, this is it. If you're looking for a gift for yourself, it's fantastic, it's comfortable, and above all else, they're doing great work for amazing people. So it's more important than ever to recognize all the selfless medical professionals in our lives. Whether you're one of these awesome humans or just wanna say thanks, Figs is giving listeners to the J Train Podcast 15, one five, 15% off for a limited of time. Just go to wearfigs.com, W-E-A-R-F-I-G-S.com, enter code JTRAIN15. That's JTRAIN15 at checkout. Wearfigs.com, code JTRAIN15 for 15% off for a limited time. Go, go, go. We love figs. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com help our friend is a mistress dear j train long time listener big fan of your live shows beach by noon subscriber my boyfriend and i are reaching out for your advice as we have a best friend who is currently in a secret relationship with a married man <gasps> they have been seeing each other on and off for over a year he even managed to find excuses during quarantine to leave his wife and kids to meet up with her Ooh, juice a our friend is a hopeless romantic and is holding out hope that he will leave his family to be with her. My boyfriend has the opinion that she will forever be the side piece until he either gets caught or becomes bored. I don't have the heart to be honest with her, and we just want her to be happy. We have only met him briefly, and he, while he seems genuine, we are convinced he's actually going we aren't convinced he's actually going to leave his family. As a way to force his hand, we were thinking about sending him or his wife an anonymous email, but we feel like we're overstepping our boundaries. What is the best way to handle this? Can't wait for your next Boston live show. So what do you think, Judy? That is really complicated. I mean, mm -hmm. there's been so many studies on whether you should tell. Um, there have been studies? Oh, yeah. People write about this all the time. Like, there's so many. Should you tell the person? Should you not? You know, like if you know that your best friend's husband is cheating, mm -hmm. you tell them what the best thing to do is, you know, and I, first of all, I don't think they should tell the wife. No, I don't think that's, uh, I, I, think don't, that's I don't, a, I don't I think that. I also don't think the anonymous email to anyone is really the right move considering right. you, they are friends with the mistress. So she is involved in this. The mistress and the guy are both, you know, and I understand the per perspective of, well, he'll leave his family and come to me. I think that is the that highest is so, mountain to yeah, climb. Now that the, the, is, first of all. That's a wish upon a star. First of all, he's cheating on his wife and he has kids. He's cheating. So yeah. you are cheating. To, you are part of him cheating. Their the, friend is. Yeah. Right um the mistress is is it, it's it's duplicitous yeah uh it says a lot about his character the fact that he left during quarantine i mean he put his family in danger i'm not yeah. you know if you, you want to go if you want to go up the the mountain of 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 you know problems yeah right I, um what would you do in this situation you're friends would, with the person honestly cheating. i think i would be like, I can't, I can't talk to you until you, I don't know if I could be friend. I mean, I, 
would have no respect for that person. Yeah. But, you know, I, it depends on how deep the friendship. It's so it's such a precarious place to be because it's like she says we have a best friend. So I, I take them at their word. Well, I, I feel like they have to do an intervention. But if she's not willing to I mean, what well, can he do if she's not willing to do it? But she, he is putting his family in danger. Like the, these kids are going to I mean, it's just it's awful. I've been cheated what, on. You've never been cheated on, have you? Not that I know of. It's I, it's an awful thing. And and I, I a family, I you know, I was in a relationship with two kids and that relationship broke up and because of not me, but mm. um you know, it's just not no, it's, it's bad it's, to be the other woman. You're to, always going to be the other woman. The kids are going to resent you. The, it's not good. No. It, Sorry. It's more than just cheating on your wife. It is it is it is a way deeper, depthier. Like this person is a part of something that is way bigger than maybe she. I'll give her empathy to say maybe she doesn't even understand how deep that this goes to the kids and, and to the. And he seems so manip. I mean, obviously yeah. he's manipulative and she's needy because he is, you know, carrying on like this. And I think a person. Uh, you know, who was really secure would be like, look, I'm not doing this. You're when you're ready to be in a relationship fully. But, you know, the fact that you're only taking part of a relation, you know, no, mm -hmm. it's bad. Someone's got to say something to her. So the advice I'm going to give to the to this woman who her and her boyfriend are the friend of the mistress is the same advice. I when I give advice on this show, I don't tell people what to do. All I say is here's how you you like here's a step-by-step -step process if i were these people i would have an intervention just like you said you sit down with her for a drink and you say hey we want to talk to you about what you're doing with your life we do not believe that this man is going to leave his family for you and that is what you want so i would tell her hey we what i would do is you we believe that you should stop this relationship if he breaks off his marriage, if he gets a divorce, then go ahead. But, but until know, then, okay, we can't uh, be your friend. Right. I, I would say I can't ever discuss this with you again. Yeah. Um, but also, I think if you focus on what he's doing instead of her behavior, that she's going to be like, well, you don't get it. You don't get him. I think sure. they should focus on him and what he's doing. They should focus on her and say, do you realize that you know, you are potentially breaking up a family. You're with someone who is not committing, is, is doing, is duplicitous towards his wife, which means, mm -hmm. you know, even if he does end up with you, are you ever going to trust him? You know, sure. I sure. think and they have to focus on her and not him. And I think you're right. Yeah, you're right. I, I think especially because it's, you know, let, let's go through the process. Do you think he's going to get out of a marriage where he, where you're the one person who signed up to fuck him right. during a marriage that he's automatically going to be like, well, forget being single. Right. I got to be with you. Like, that's not how it's going right. to go. Right. So, yeah, I think speaking to her and saying, and also letting because her know that. Because they can't talk for him. Like, you know, yeah. she can just say, no, that's not true. That's not true. But if they talk to her and say, you know, you're, you are you know, the reason a family's break, you have to have more self-esteem. Like, you know, you deserve better. You deserve someone who is fully with you. Like, build and her up, but also say, and I cannot, I cannot engage with you with this anymore because it's wrong. It is morally wrong. Yeah, and that's going to the source. The right. email, the anonymous email is a sidestep to have yeah. a real conversation with your friend. I and agree. And you'll end your friendship when she finds out. She'll be like, go fuck yourself, and you'll end a friendship. <laughs> so goodbye, friend. J Train yeah. Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com here with Judy Gold. Go, go, go. JudyGold.com. Get the book. Yes, I can say that. Yes, I can say that. It's everywhere you buy books. Everywhere. There's an Audible version. Audible.com. Go through them. Uh, and also, Judy has her own podcast called Kill Me Now. I do. When does that come out? It's every day Tuesday, of the week? baby. Go get involved with Judy's podcast. Kill Me Now. Go, go, go. Let's read this one. BJ's should be fun. Hey, Jared. My boyfriend likes blowjobs with a lot of deep throat. I don't mind this sometimes, but a lot of the time I find it uncomfortable because it kind of hurts and makes me gag a lot and almost throw up. 
<laughs> I just love how plainly she wrote that. Yeah, yeah. I've started. I've started a new job a few weeks ago. I'm also a couple of weeks away from completing my degree online, and I'm on my period this week, so I've been a bit stressed. Last night, my boyfriend expressed frustration about how recently I haven't given him any blowjobs without without sex involved. For example, I have not given him more than one blowjob this month. That that is in quotes. That his that's his feedback to her while getting her online degree and on her period. Can you imagine? He's a fucking <laughs> asshole. Go ahead. Well, I want my boyfriend to feel sexually fulfilled. I feel kind of upset. I think I'm upset because I have been feeling slightly sexually unfulfilled due to the low numbers of spontaneous sex we have been having this past month or two. I guess my question is twofold. First, how do I satisfy my boyfriend's need for deep throat blowjobs when I don't always enjoy giving them? Second, how do I let him know I want him to be more assertive and spontaneous during our sex, e.g. more public sex outdoors, etc.? Boy, that took a turn at the end. Uh, I know. What the fuck is that at the end? I, 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 yeah, she's like, I want to be fucking in the woods. Um, right. What do you think, Judy? I, I mean, this is obviously a, a, an email about blowjobs, but also about communication. Right. I, it's definitely about communication. I feel like, you know, she's so focused on him. What about yeah. her needs? Like, okay, he needs a spontaneous blowjob. You have to tell him what you need, and you'd be more willing to give him a spontaneous blowjob sure. if your needs were being met, i.e. fucking in the woods or on, you know... A park bench or yeah, something. Yeah, on Broadway <laughs> and 76th Street, you know? But, um, yeah, I feel like... In a public restroom of right. some sort. This is what gets her off, yeah. First of all, and that sucks i remember when i did a blo- you know i did some blowjobs in my past and I hate back that. in your day oh yeah I, I don't know he's he's got a his needs are not you know it's 50 50. it's 50 yeah. 50. and you know if you're going through everything's not always great in a relationship it's not like sure. you're always spot you'll have months where you fuck all the time and then like mm-hmm. a month where it's like all right i'll do but That's- the That's roller coaster of love in a relationship right. exists. Right. So I feel like she has to. Well, I think I meet? think this is yeah. Go ahead. The communication that I would come at with is, hey, um, I wouldn't make it about the blowjobs. I would make it about excitement. Right. If you make it about excitement, now we're not talking about like the way he's talking about it, where he says. I haven't, I, I haven't gotten more than one blowjob this month. Like he's the fucking manager like, at, at yeah. your uh, at in the accounting. Job at BJ's. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> at BJ's. <laughs> Sitting there at BJ's with the red shirt on. Uh, yeah, right. I, I got one this I month. My blowjob. I got four more blowjobs. Let's go. <laughs> Get to gagging. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So I, I think like the way he's communicating it is disgusting, but I think the way you can kind of come at you have your own problem where you're like hey i want to be having sex outside i think if you were having more sex outside or more spontaneous sex where if your needs were being met you would be more excited to fulfill his needs right absolutely maybe you know it takes two to tango if he's if that's his only need first of all he sounds really immature that's like i just want blowjobs without sex like okay (laughs) you can have that but this is what i want i mean if this is not if and this like, is what, not an, how immature are you? If this is not an advertisement for being a lesbian, I don't know what is. Know, this, exactly. guy, this guy's like, I'm trying to get my gag and blowjobs more yeah. than once a week. <laughs> it's like, oh, who wants Yeah, a- I need <laughs> you to gag. I need you to puke. I don't care. And like, it doesn't even seem like he gives a shit about her. Yeah, puke on his dick once and see yeah, what exactly. happens. That, you should puke on his no, dick. Have like really smelly food right before and, <laughs> let, and then he can enjoy. And then go, hey, this is what you wanted. Sometimes, right. you know, it hits Here's me wrong. Here's your fucking blowjob. <laughs> Here's your curry blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should definitely, you know, I think you have to be at the negotiation table. Let him know I'm unexcited. If you say I'd be more excited to blow you if we were doing some of and my needs and here are my needs. How does that, and what's in it for me, honey? You're getting, yeah. A, a, yeah. What, do you ever think about how it is for me? Like, put yourself in my position. I'd love to gag on your dick if there yeah. were a bunch of leaves under my knees. Right, and all, right. You know, like, that's that's the communication. You got it, it's got, yeah. Give and take, baby. 
The J Train Podcast is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies wants to talk underpants. Pull up a chair. They just want you to feel comfortable, like really comfortable in your underwear. Have you ever seriously considered the underwear that feathers your nether regions? You've got some important stuff down there, you know. Thankfully, MeUndies has, which is why they're changing the game of the, with softer than soft sustainable undies in fun prints like unicorns, dinosaurs, or surfboards and lots of colors so you can be totally comfy being you inside and out. I love MeUndies. I got to tell you, when you are wearing a comfortable pair of underwear, you walk better. You feel better. You're happier. I was wearing old underwear the other day. I was wearing old underwear, and it just didn't feel right, and I was in a bad mood. I took them off. I put them into the garbage. I didn't even put them into the wash. I said, it's, it's enough. We're breaking up. You got to break up with your old underwear. That's the deal. And MeUndies is a great way to – you can sign up for subscriptions, and you can kind of create an underwear conveyor belt where you put the new one in and you chuck the old ones out. Every month, get new ones. It's a great way to live your life because you're going to feel better. You're going to walk better. You're going to be emotionally stable through you, through your underwear region. It's going to feel good. MeUndies traveled the world to bring back super soft fabric that's sustainable source from beechwood trees. Keep your underpants drawers stocked with a MeUndies member membership. I'm telling you, that membership is the way to go. A MeUndies membership is a monthly subscription that sends new pairs right to your door so you can keep your undies drawer stocked, fresh, and fun. Plus, with the member access to site-wide savings and exclusive sales, you can easily and affordably build a quality con collection of super soft undies over time. And that's one heck of an undie upgrade if you ask me. MeUndies is, comes in a fun matching patterns and come in all shapes and sizes from extra small to 4XL, all bodies welcome. So you and your significant other can just, you know, waltz around. In the, and it is, I will say, it sounds a little cutesy, but Jess and I will put on the, the onesies. And when we're in the matching onesies, I mean, it is, uh, we, we can't stop giggling. It's, it's really kind of a weird effect on your relationship. MeUndies is the only underwear for me. Try it yourself. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get 15, one five, 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash JTrain. It's a no-brainer. Get yours today. MeUndies.com slash JTrain. MeUndies.com slash JTrain. MeUndies.com slash JTrain. JTrain Podcast at gmail.com. JTrain Podcast at gmail.com. The Great Childless Wonder. Jared, feather, feather, long time, first time, and love everything you're doing. I found myself in a sticky situation. Would love to hear your thoughts. I met a guy on an app, and we hit it off right away. We've been seeing each other as often as we can, have a ton of fun together, and can talk about anything, and the sex is amazing. When it casually came up to share what we saw our futures looking like, he shared that he wants to have kids, which I definitely do not. We each explained why we felt that w the way we did and moved on from the conversation. For reference, I'm 26, he's 27. My question is, if you're seeing someone and it's going well and you both really want to keep seeing each other, but you know that each, uh, that each ultimately want different things long term, how do you proceed, if at all, with the relationship? This is a good question. It is, and they're so young. Um, and she doesn't know if she'll want kids eventually. Yeah, do, would you, I mean, does the, did you always want kids? I, I was like, I, I know, no, I was like, I wasn't the one. It was my ex who's like, I'm having this kid with or without you. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> then I loved it. Like, I, yeah. like, I mean, I always thought I'd have kids, but you know, being a lezzy, you just didn't know how we were going to be able to do it. So I just figured, oh, it's not going to happen. I'll be the fun aunt. Mm -hmm. And it happened. And I ended up being the mommy, you know, like I love it. Yeah. Hands on. Um, not that way, but, um, no, but I, 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 <laughs> but you are, yeah. but you are, you know, a Jewish mom, like, right. uh, you know, like I, I, you know, I, I, I have a familial feeling with right. you, right. you know, so it's like, you know, so I, I under what you're saying feels like good advice to this person. Like, Hey, let's let's pump the brakes. Have your fun. You don't let's check in with each other a year from now. Maybe his mind changes. Right. Maybe your mind changes. Maybe the maybe you're so in love with this guy that you're like, I'll have kids for you, and then but what? And then you end up being. You, she doesn't end up say loving why it. she doesn't want to have kids. She just says I don't. Uh, she's made that decision. But I again, when you like at twenty six, 
I felt differently about a lot of things at right. 26 that I feel right. at 35. And, right. and also what you're saying too, where you're like, the most important thing I think you just said is like, uh, you know, growing up, how is a lesbian going to have kids? What, I don't right. understand how that happens. And then the world changes and it becomes easier. There's other options. You know, they don't know what's going to happen right. when they're 30. And they're, t- I mean, you're 26. Like that is, people don't need to have kids in their 20s. Sorry. I, I, I think it's okay to not check every box in the beginning of a relationship. Right. Right. Go through the motions, have fun together. See what see where how it goes. you grow together. You, he could, you know, you're right. They could change and and grow, but you don't say, "Oh, well, he didn't want kids. Uh, he wanted kids, so I'm just going to That's a stupid excuse, I think, unless you're like 39. Well, also to you go know back what I to mean? to go but, back to your book um where it's like people avoiding having uncomfortable conversations. Conversations. Yeah. It's like Life is uncomfortable. There's going to be a point like you're going to go through the like go through a little bit of discomfort to get to you to get to happiness. Like my dad, like his he, he'd say my whole life. And I, I know it's not his line, but he was like, you got to play in traffic if you want to get hit. Right. So that's like a kind of a life lesson where it's like, you know, you like this guy. It's going well. Um, part of the traffic is, oh, shit, you don't want kids. Now you just got hit by the car. But, you know, like it doesn't. But it's also like, yeah, I, I, you, look, here's an example. Like my, mm-hmm. my uh, girlfriend, Elisa, her sister, I guess was like 38, 39, I don't know. Um, and she really wanted to have kids and she met this guy and he's like 10 years old or whatever, or, mm-hmm. you know, he was, I don't, I don't know, in his forties, whatever. And they were dating and uh, she said, I come with kids and that's it. Like, Right away, because they were, the clock was ticking. Yeah, it's time like, to go. He's like, oh, you know, I never thought I'd have them. All right. And now, like, they have kids. They have two kids, and they're like a happy, happy family. But, you know, when you're 26, really? I was, And I was watching that. Have you watched the Indian matchmaker show? Oh, on my Netflix? God! <laughs> Is that the fucking best show? It's great. It's great. And it's... It's like uh, so much of it, I'm watching it, and it's like so much of it is stuff that people don't want to hear. Right. Like these matchmakers, she goes, she looks at the one woman, she, the one woman had a kid, and right. she looks at her and goes, well, you don't have a lot of options because you right. got a kid. Right. And, she, and you see the look on her face, and you're like, and I'm sitting with my girlfriend watching that going, listen, that's harsh reality, but right. that is reality. Like, right. you know, your options become limited because not every person you're going to meet is going to want you to have a kid. parent, yeah. That, and, and that's not, life sucks. That right. sucks to hear. But that, like, those people who are match made, they all say, like, we work towards love. Like, you, t- this g- woman and guy, if you're working together, you're working together. You're right. at the negotiation table. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Judy Gold. At Jew D Gold. Go follow. Go get involved. Hilarious. I love watching Judy on stage. The book, Go, Go, Go. Yes, I can say that. Great book. Go, go, go right now. Let's do a. I got a mail email. Oh, good. Okay. Quarantine Sitch with God. Uh oh. Oh, boy. Here's the sitch. Been talking to this girl since May. We've gone through the whole quarantine dating. FaceTimes, phone calls, texting. Met up in the park and date lasted over seven hours. Wow. Great. She should go out with the one that wants outside. Uh... <laughs> the, 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 the public park fucker. Um, great sign, right? We've gone on hiking dates. <laughs> this guy's the perfect guy. Oh, God. That have lasted hours and then back to relax and hang. That Things got hot, high school style, with some intense makeout sessions. She's 28, I'm 27. Here we are, uh, August, uh, here we are in August, three months later, and we finally went out for dinner and drinks. Saw each other after she went home for a month. Awkward because the communication wasn't there, so confusion all around. Here's the issue. She brings up her re- relationship with God and how she believes there's a path and she wants to wait to have sex until marriage. Totally understand and respect, except this isn't for me. How do I go about ending things because I don't want a ghost? We live in the same neighborhood here in uh, in Brooklyn. Send aid, tips, advice, lend your powers. Thank you. So what do you think? 
just say. Do you really want to know what I think? I would love to hear what you think. (laughs) Yes, you can say that. What the fuck? God? What the fuck is wrong with me? Like, seriously. (laughs) I mean. Uh, Can I say something? Like, we're Jews. Listen. We're Jews, right? Sure. And we identify as Jews and, you know, it's a, you know, it's in our genes, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, we're a, we're a community and a religion, but, but when you are letting God, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just think for yourself. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I feel like people who are overly religious and like they have a church or a pastor tell them what they're supposed to think or how they're supposed to act. Totally. Um, I'm with you, and I, that's kind of why I've always like. Um, I've always been a fan of Jewish culture, not because I'm in it, but because it does seem like there's just a lot of like, let's discuss it. Right. You know, it's like, all, let's discuss. That's why there's so many Jewish comments. We look at everything from every different angle. Like, yeah, but I, I will say for this guy who's emailing in, um, it's tough to look at a woman who's like, I want to wait till marriage and go, think right. for yourself, like, suck my dick. You know, like. <laughs> he's 27 and yeah. he's making out. Like, mm. This ain't the chick. This ain't it. That's okay. I, I think that, I think you can break up with someone because of sex in the same way you can break up with someone right. because the communication isn't there. Right. It's a part of the relationship wheel. I know it feels immature. Well, and also, like, when she said the God thing, it sounds like he was like, you know, bells went off. Sure, sure. And like, so, oh shit. Yeah. yeah, you gotta follow. That's like following your gut. Like, it's yeah. it's totally okay to say to someone, "Hey, I've enjoyed your company. I've enjoyed getting to know, but to I know you." But I can't get into this God thing. But th- we yeah. obviously come are, are looking for two different things, and th- I know why it's hard. It's hard because. It's August. It's three months later. They've probably texted each other as much as he's texted his mom and dad. Right, so he right, feels right. like he feels like he's built up some sort of like weird like like connection or connection. Yeah, and yeah. It, but it's not there. You didn't know that God is a big part of her life. Right. So you don't know her. So it's time like, to say I want to be in relation with you. I don't want to be in relation with you and God. You know what I there mean? There it is. That yeah. that's and that's as easy. That's as, yeah, as simply that's put as it can be. Yeah. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Can we do one more, Judy? Is that cool? Yeah, of course. Let's do one more. Okay. Um friend lifestyle question. Mm. Okay. Papa JT. Uh, I have a friend who treats dating apps like they're her second job. We're not we're not a huge city, but I swear our city in a couple of neighboring cities like two hour radius. She has matched with what feels like every eligible bachelor. Keep in mind, we're 26 and 28 years old. I feel like the well has been poisoned. LOL. It's like she's either gone on dates with them, matched with them, hooked up with them or has a crush on them. Quote unquote. It came to a head last night, last weekend when we were at a small gathering where a guy who she met on the apps who she had never met before, but had been texting was at the small get together. Him and I kind of naturally vibed and seemed to be clicking. I wasn't maliciously trying to flirt with him. It was just a natural click. Keep in mind, we were just talking at the get together. She got very upset with me, told me I hurt her because I knew she had texted with him and had a crush on him. In my mind, I was thinking, girl, you could say that about the entire tri-state area. (laughs) This is a great email, but I backed off. I told the guy that we could be friends, that it hurt her feelings. We seemed to be hitting it off. He said she did that he said he didn't understand why they really didn't talk that much at the at all and didn't see why she was making it an issue. But I doubled down again, saying we could be friends, our friend circles overlap, but I valued my friendship with her and didn't want to step on toes. Even though she made a huge deal about it, she called another guy and talked to him all night on the way home. And then the next day she was telling me about a different guy she had matched with on Bumble. Realistically, <laughs> I'm annoyed and it's and it's frustrating. She talks to so many guys and she's territorial that it's hard to not step on toes. My mom, LOL, doesn't think I should hang out with her as much or bring her around as much. I don't know how to tell her, hey, you literally talk and match with every single guy. You can't have them all in a non-confrontational way. Me and her do have so much fun together. We have a really good friend group dynamic. But this one thing is like, ugh, we have slim pickings in our areas anyways with this in the mix, it makes it even harder. 
great email. I get it. This I this friend is not right, but what do you think, Judy Gold? You know, I think it, this is a case where you could say something in a joking manner sure. that will get the point across. Like, mm -hmm. you know, okay, if you don't want to talk to him, then I guess I can't talk to the blah, blah, blah. You know, like I think, <laughs> I think there's a way of using humor to say no. You know, like, yeah. it, you know, like all the shit she was saying in there, like, if I'm not going to talk to him, like you've talked to every single person, you know, even even if it's after she brings. Yeah. Well, after she brings up the new guy, you say, so are you done with the other guy? Can I have your right. leftovers? Yeah. Like, do yeah you mind something like that. Why you, know? Don't, you know, why don't we do an Excel sheet and yeah. you can decide whether I'm allowed to, you know, like that kind of thing. Fre make friends it funny and put it into perspective. And I think you could get your point across without calling Friends her should be a alive. crazy slutty. But it's, like, <laughs> but it's so funny that, she, first of all, she should be happy if if she clicks with someone else. Absolutely. But, As a friend, she should right. be happy. But it does, you know, I think with a lot of women, um, there's this like, th that's oh, where they compete with relationships. Yeah. You know, like, oh, the one who's married, the one in the relationship's winning, right. the one who's single's losing. If she gets there first, then I'm the loser. Yeah. And this all plays into this relationship. I think if you say to her, I think joking helps communicate it. I think also it helps to start the conversation where you right. go, hey, um, is it cool if I talk to the leftovers now? And then she right. goes, what do you mean? You go, well, you told me not to talk to that guy. And you can you can talk to someone without getting angry. Like you can just like I would just map out the facts. You're talking about a guy to me right now. Two weeks ago, I vibed with a guy that you told me to stay away from. Right. Which one are you dating? Are you right. dating them all? Yeah. Wait. The so like, let me, you know, even like, can you put, you know, a dot on them so I know yeah. where I can approach them? <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. And she what? and her saying she had a crush. I had a crush on him. What? What? From looking at his profile? Shut the fuck up. What are you, 14, writing your name in the back <laughs> of a fucking binder? You know, I, I, I. I'm with you. I think this all kind of the thing is I can talk you if they're a true friend, you can talk to them this way. Right. You might have fun with her and but if she if but she takes away and she doesn't Yeah, if you keep it light. Yeah, you gotta keep it really light and say, look. I, Listen, I don't know what to do. I would I would be flabbergasted. That's the the best way to go. You go and you go, wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. You you're talking to a guy on Bumble. I, I, I have to ask you, you told me to stay away from a guy two weeks right, ago. Right, right, right. You know, uh, what's the deal here? And let her talk, and then she or can go. Or even, like, just checking in, wanting to make sure, you know, the expiration date. Because, you know. <laughs> you hey, gotta, I, yeah. I talked to my brother today. Are you dating him, too, yeah. now? Like, yeah. um, I, I, is it okay if I talk to my brother on the phone <laughs> and catch up with him? You know, like, even that. Yeah. Like, it's just... Be fun with it, but also like yeah, the fun I say part. Use humor to get your fucking point across. And the fun can lead to you just going, I'm fucking with you, but it is a little annoying. Right, right. You right. can get that gets you. That That's the is bridge. the power of comedy, by the way. Absolutely. And listen, everyone can find the power of comedy in Judy Gold's new book. Nice. Go, one. go, go. Yes, I can say that. It's wherever you buy books, judygold.com at Jew. D Gold on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, Judy, so much for coming on. Oh, my God. So much fun. This Thank is a blast. You. It was so good to have you. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Monday and Thursday. We'll be back next week. Boom. Don't forget to like the video you just watched. I have many more. Subscribe to the channel right now. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, you fool. There's even a bell you can click to. Now you've got your week set Monday through Friday. I'm here for you.